All right, in the last video, we created this, uh, well, we created a player node with a nice little piece of art underneath him. As usual, as a recap, it's important to note that if we move the parent, the art will move along with him. That's a really important fact because we're going to be moving the player, not the art, and the player will drag that art along with him later on. So anyway, for now, we're going to actually, and the reason why I bring that up is because we're going to be adding a script to the player to actually create that movement today. Anyways, if we zoom way out and you look down here, you'll see this blue line kind of forms a screen of the game, right? And if we drag over the player, which by the way can be kind of dangerous to do because if you click wrong, you could end up clicking the art like I just did and you can end up dragging the art without moving the player. So you can, by the way, always undo by pushing Control Z get that location of the art over back to the player and if you happen to accidentally do this and you can't and you're having trouble like you know lining them up you can actually go to the transform on the art like so click underneath uh, where it says no TD right here and click transform and you can just hit this little flippy arrow thing and it'll move them right back over to where the player is at it'll zero it out. Anyways, if you click on the player and you click this little two square looking image right there, it'll lock it in so that you can no longer select the art or any of its children inside of uh, the screen over here. You actually have to go over here to select it. You can see that the size of this art is <laughs> really small compared to the size of the potential screen. And if we hit play, you'll see what I mean here because the screen is that size and the player is that size, you know, not relative at all. So if we go to project, project settings, we can actually mess with this a bit. I like to close up all of these little arrows over here and kind of just go to where I need to go. It might seem daunting at first inside of here, but it's not really that big of a deal. We're gonna just go to 640 by 480 for the width and the height. And then if you go down to over here where it says stretch, we're just gonna go to 2D on there. Aspect, we can just hit keep for now. You can hit shrink to kind of zoom it in, but we're gonna be zooming in using a camera at a later point. And then if we hit play on here again, it'll look about the same with the size of the ship and everything on there, but we'll be fixing that with a 2D camera here in a little bit. But for now, the size of the screen is a much better thing. And if we make the screen bigger, you'll see that the ship gets bigger now instead of staying the same size, right? Which is a lot better. In fact, if I maximize the screen like so, you'll see the 640 by 480 screen just kind of stays on there and that our ship kind of gets bigger along with it, which we didn't have that option before messing with those settings. So now let's actually start to do things. Left click on the player. We're gonna hit the add script button right here, which is that scroll with the plus sign. We're gonna hit create onto this and we're gonna make a nice script in here. We're going to destroy all these comments on here. I hit these four arrows to expand my screen. You do not need to do that. And now let's actually build things up. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So one of the built-in functions that Godot automatically uh, uses is something called physics process. So if you write in funk underscore physics and you'll see it automatically populate here. You can double click on that or hit enter to make it happen. Hit enter again and it'll automatically tab. If it does not, if you're like this, you can hit the tab button. It'll make that little arrow with the line next to it. And now because this is on here, what physics process does, it runs a certain number of times per second. Uh, normally 60 times is pre-built into Godot, I believe. You can change that inside the editor settings. And you don't need to know what this delta means yet. We'll explain that at a later point. But what this does is it basically allows for you to do something a certain number of times per second. And Godot will be like, hey, uh, I need you to do whatever is inside a physics process. Okay, I need you to do whatever is in physics process. Do that several times per second. So it's really good for finding out what is going on on the keyboard and on the mouse and making things happen from there. You use physics process anytime that there's physics involved, which is every time they're using a kinematic body 2D, a static body, or a uh, rigid body. Now you don't need to know what the differences are between those things yet, but just know that if you have a kinematic body 2D, you need to be using physics process instead of process. Okay, so, and again, if you didn't follow all that, that's okay. Just go with it. Just know that this runs several times per second and just leave it at that. Now we wanted to move. And like I said, there's a lot of things that are kind of pre-built into these nodes, uh, including variables and functions. And 
we can use that to our advantage. For instance, if we write translate on here, this is a pre-built-in function. And if I open up the first uh, parentheses on here, it'll tell you what you need, which is a vector to offset. This offset would be like the amount that you're translating, the amount that you're moving something. Now, what's a vector to is probably a big question for you guys. It's simply a collection of an X and a Y coordinate. So right now, for instance, if we look at this transform, you'll see he's at X position 264.512. And he's in a Y position 212.095, right? Now, you don't need to do this as you're following along. And by the way, if you want to open up a script, you just hit this little scroll looking thing next to your player, next to your node. I expand this out. So to kind of show you what that is, you'll see that there's actually a pre-built-in function called position inside of the system here. It's pre-built into all nodes. All nodes know what position that they are in. If we write in, print position, there we go, and we hit the play button, and inside the output over here on the bottom, you'll see it constantly printing out that position inside of the output over here, because we made it, and you'll see it does the X position on the left and the Y position on the right. The reason why it is doing that, the X comes first, then the Y second, that's what a vector two is, X then Y. So a vector two is a collection of X and Y, and it has both those coordinates in there. Position is an example of a vector two. And what they want on here is how much they want you to change that position. So if I hit translate, like we were earlier to make this built-in function happen, and remember function is just simply a keyword with a parentheses afterwards. And if I do the first parentheses on here, it'll tell me what I need, which is a vector two offset. So if I write in vector two on here, and then I open up that parentheses, you'll see that what you need is a float X and a float Y, two numbers on there, an X and Y, how much you want them to move. If you want it to move to the right, you want to increase the X, you just put in something like one, and say we don't want to move up or down at all, so we'll just do it like that. So we'll say one, zero, like that. You close in your parentheses, this one closing in the vector two, this one closing in the translate. If I minimize this now, and I hit play, you'll see that our ship is now moving to the right all on its own, moving one unit per physics process, right? The reason why that is happening is because of this translate function that is built in. And what this does, it's exactly the same as saying position dot x plus equals one. This will do the exact same thing. And if I hit play again, you'll see it does exactly the same thing because I simply took the position and moved it to the right by adding this one to it. So we've kind of started to use this built-in physics process on here. Let's actually do something different than this though. We only want him to move when we push a button, right? So we're gonna, so how do you test if you're te uh, pushing a button? Well, you simply write if I'm pushing a button. So you say if, and then whatever happens inside this parentheses will occur inside the game so it'll check uh, if this whatever is in this parentheses is true it'll do anything after this colon just like a, a, a method just like a function and if you hit enter it'll automatically tab another side in and anything that happens tabbed in like so any of these tabs down here will happen if whatever is in here is true so for instance if i just have true written in there this will always run in physics process so if i say position plus equals one again. Oh, position.x, sorry. Position.x plus equals one like that. You'll see him moving to the right continuously, just like nothing has changed. But if I change this to false, like so, and I hit the play button again, you'll see he does no longer move. So now that we've kind of started to go over like the if statements and the position, I'm gonna leave this video at that just to kind of give you some time to process. Just remember that whatever's tabbed in after this, as long as it's true, will run. If it's false, it will not run. And we're gonna start to kind of show more what to do with that by using some input. So like if a key is being pressed, things will actually start to run. And if a key is not being pressed, then this will not run. So we'll leave it at that for this video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Have a great day, guys. Bye.